The following program is a paid presentation for American Medicine Today and the Bonatti Spine Institute. The information and opinions expressed are solely those of American Medicine Today and are not the opinions of the station, its affiliates, management, or employees. Welcome to American Medicine Today, presented by the Bonatti Spine Institute, the world leader in advanced spine surgery, featuring the internationally acclaimed inventor of the Bonatti Spine Procedures, Alfred Bonatti, MD. Hi, I'm your host, Kimberly Bromell, and welcome to American Medicine Today, brought to you by the Bonatti Spine Institute. Every week, we inform you about breakthroughs in medicine, educate you about the growing concerns medical professionals, politicians, and experts alike have about Obamacare. And we highlight the work of Dr. Alfred Bonatti and the Bonatti Spine Institute by sharing some of our patients' miraculous recovery stories. In today's show, I'll be joined by my American Medicine Today radio co-host, Ethan Euchre, and we'll interview Dr. Ambika Bum and Dr. Terry Saklos, co-founders of the biotech company, Bacanta. They'll tell us about amazing breakthroughs in nanodiamonds to detect abnormalities associated with cancer at a much earlier stage. Next, we'll hear from Corporal Clarence Rogers, one of our Help for Wounded Warriors patients that received complimentary Bonatti Spine procedures from world-renowned orthopedic surgeon and founder of the Bonatti Spine Institute, Dr. Alfred Bonatti. We'll hear about his remarkable recovery from him personally and the staff that assist Dr. Bonatti in treating these patients in our Back to Life segment. In our final segment, I'll speak with Dr. Bonatti about the problems facing our Veterans Administration's new TRICARE program and that he feels will once again let down our American soldiers who need it most. Introducing our first guest is radio program executive producer and co-host of American Medicine Today, Ethan Euchre. Thanks, Kimberly. Every Saturday at noon, we are joined by interesting guests who shed light on the growing concerns many Americans have about their medical care. The patented Bonatti spine procedures are leading the way in minimally invasive spine surgery exclusively performed at the Bonatti Spine Institute. Now, a recent seven and a half year survey shows a patient satisfaction rate of 98.75%. Dr. Bonatti dramatically changed the way conventional spine surgery was performed. And following in Dr. Bonatti's quest to find medical experts who are pushing beyond conventional methods of medical diagnostics and treatments, we are proud to introduce our first guests. Dr. Ambika Bum and Dr. Terry Saklos, co-founders of the biotech company Bacanta. They have found a way to detect cancer from its source by inserting tiny fluorescent diamonds inside the body called nanodiamonds. And we asked them to explain this cutting edge technology. Hi, we're here with a Skype interview with Dr. Ambika Bum founder and CEO of Bacanta, and alongside her is Dr. Terry Saklos. And they're going to be talking about how tiny diamonds can help find cancer before it spreads. I find this all very fascinating, Ethan. It's amazing. I can't wait for them to explain exactly how it works. So, uh, Dr. Baum, I know that you are, I don't want to ask a, a lady her age, but you're a very young lady, as we can tell. Um, and you've had a pretty illustrious career. Can you tell us your background in uh, nanodiamonds? Yeah, um, I have been in the field of nanomedicine for my career, and I was doing my second postdoc at the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute when we developed this technology um, in DC. That's amazing. So, I mean, where exactly, where and how did you, again, as lay people, Kimberly mm -hmm. and I, this is kind of the first we've heard about it. I'm sure it's been around for a while, though, correct? Yeah. Um, well, in terms of nanodiamonds existing, they exist in the environment in general, but they haven't been used for medical imaging applications until recently because they're challenging materials to modify and to stabilize. So to use them for biological applications, you need them to stay stable as individual particles, as well as be able to do chemistry with them to attach them to agents that will target them to specific diseases. So that innovation has only happened in the last couple of years. Now, how do these nano diamonds actually locate the cancer? Yeah, so what they are, are anti light bulbs is what you can think of them like. They give us a signal that we can track, and so when we inject them, we put on their surface, we attach a targeting agent that will then direct them specifically to a particular disease, in this case, our background is strength is in cancer work, and so that's what we're looking at. So we look at antibodies that then attach them to receptors on the surface of cancer cells, and that light follows because it's attached to the antibody, and that gets to the 
the tumor, which is how we see it. Now, is this done through, uh, like, magnetism? <laughs> That's a good question. So what they have are light properties. They're fluorescent. Mm -hmm. So um, you excite them with one color of light, and then they emit in another color. But they do have a magnetic sensitivity, which we can use to enhance their light properties. And so I was also reading, uh, I was also reading, Dr. Bum, that the, um, the, the, the existing methods, the whole reason you kind of got into nanodiamonds was that the existing methods for detecting tumors, and uh, maybe Dr. Sacklos can chime in here as well, they're, they were toxic, and how were they toxic, and what led you to, um, what led you to look into nanodiamonds uh, to sort of circumvent the toxicity of current methods? Well, um well, uh, great question. So right now, cancer di di diagnosis is really done at, at the, micro the imaging uh, a tumor using like a CT scan or an MRI scan, and, and radiologists have to look for shadows. And um, usually when you see a shadow, it's become a real, uh, relatively big, and you know, that, there's an urgency that comes with that. Uh, with these diamonds, we can actually get an earlier detection. Now, the toxicity, which we're talking about, is the the older generation, uh, the initial probes that were developed had issues of toxicity, which really limited their application to visualize the, uh, uh, the, the tumor. And so these nanotimes, the next generation, where instead of seeing a shadow now, um, as we convention, these little light bulbs that we can actually have within the body to image them early on so that the cancer gets illuminated and, and it results it's better for the radiologist and for the patient. And how long do these nano diamonds stay in the body? Are they there forever, or you know, are you always going to have nano diamonds in your body, or are they absorbed or expelled? What happens to them? Uh, typically, materials are expelled through the body. We, it depends on how what kind of application you are using, how your injection route is, and how they will then be expelled. But your body is very well designed to handle forward materials. Then it's uh, evolved to be this amazing machine that knows how to handle a lot of. Different um, diamonds are some of the sharpest things on in the universe. Right. Do we really want them crushed up and put inside our body? How, how do you avoid, it's a total layperson question, but it's a valid point. If they're that sharp, how do they not shred your cells? Right. Well, I, it, it's all about the size. The diamonds are a nano size, and uh, I, I think it's 100,000 times smaller than a width of a hair. So they are absolutely tiny, um, pixie dust what we sometimes call it, they're absolutely tiny. And so uh, at that size, it, it's, there really isn't an issue of them um, causing any abrasion or, or checking the cells. The cells are actually many times larger than that. Where are we at with putting nano diamonds into practice? You know, if someone thinks that they want to use this as a screening method, um, is Bacanta, your company, the only place that does it, or are there other hospitals and practices around the country that do as well? Well, this technology is very cutting edge, it's very novel, and so we are at the very beginning of this. Um, and so the process of coding them and stabilizing them is the first step in making them really usable for all of this. And that currently we're at the preclinical stage of using them um, for studies. We haven't gotten them into patients yet, but that is the direction we're heading. And do, uh, do either of you foresee the cost coming down for, uh, for cancer detection using nano diamonds, or will it remain the same or even be a little more expensive? Any ideas? Well, we think that being proactive early detection means that, uh, you, that the, the options patients have available to them um, will not be as, as aggressive as chemotherapy is very expensive, surgery is very expensive. So the earlier you detect, hopefully the cost savings will come from, from that. So then we do foresee that. The, the, the bill that is fake at the end will be a smaller bill. And we're speaking with Dr. Ambika Bum and Dr. Terry Saklos of Vicanta, um, where they're using nano diamonds to detect cancer cells. Absolutely amazing um, continued innovation in the medical field. Thank you for your contribution to medicine. Thank you, guys. At the Benati Spine Institute, all of the procedures are performed here at our 11-acre facility, from your initial consultation and exam to x-rays and MRIs on our on-site imaging center. All surgeries are performed in one of our three surgical operating rooms and recovery is just steps away. This allows a surgeon more access to their patients and allows you to go home the same day. We'll be right back to hear from a Benati Spine Procedure recipient benefiting from our Help from Wounded Warriors program in our Back to Life segment.
Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Bonatti created, perfected, and patented the Bonatti Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Bonatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Bonatti Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Bonatti succeeds where others fail. Welcome back to American Medicine Today, presented by the Bonatti Spine Institute. Dr. Bonatti came to this country years ago and is proud to call himself an American citizen. Some of his goals in producing American Medicine Today are to introduce new medical technologies that can change the way we all view our medical care and the possibilities that exist when those individuals get a chance to get their message out. Another goal is to help our wounded warriors by charitably performing his patented Bonatti Spine Procedures on soldiers who are unable to afford these specialized and remarkable life-altering surgeries. Our next segment highlights United States Marine Corporal Clarence Rogers in our Back to Life segment. My name is Corporal Rogers, or Corporal Clarence Rogers, and I was in the United States Marine Corps. Yes, I deployed to Afghanistan in 2010. Well, what got me to Bernardi Institute, the first go around was my back. Um, when I was in the military, you know, there's this constant, constant pressure on my back. So everything, every little thing I was doing was putting a lot, a lot of tension on my back. So. As the years go by, it was started getting worse and worse and worse. And then one day we were PTing, physical training, and we were doing some up downs and some box jumps and I landed wrong. Landed and pretty much destroyed my back, the lower part of my back. And I, got, I, I would say a couple months later, a couple weeks later, I couldn't walk. My left leg like completely was like non-mobile. My back was hurting. My cousin had to help me up out of bed. It was like excruciating pain. Cause I really wanted to stay in the Marine Corps for a very long time. I wanted to actually make a career out of it. But with the back injury, I wasn't able to um, basically finish my physical, uh, my physical fitness test, which is three miles, 20 pull-ups and 20, well, 100 crunches. So when I couldn't do that, they seen that there was a problem and they pretty much was like, hey, you know, there's nothing we could do. We might as well just try to get out. So I did. It was a huge letdown because I was in limbo with picking up sergeant. Um, I was a, I'm a black belt, Marine Corps martial arts instructor, and I was doing pretty good in my career to know that I could do better and be pretty much forced out because of my back. It was, it was definitely hard. I couldn't go jet skiing, and I love jet skiing. I couldn't go jet skiing, I couldn't go dirt biking, couldn't go on a roller coaster if I wanted to. Then just sitting down, like how I'm sitting down right now, it hurt. Walking hurt. Just every, every little bit of thing that I was doing, something would hurt. It would trigger some type of pain and I would be out for the day. Who led me was my coach, Mr. Amir. And I was complaining to Mr. Amir, letting him know, hey, um, I just got out the military. My back is a little messed up, but I still want to fight for you. He's like, all right, well, you know, just come on in and we'll, I'll get you ready. So just preparing to fight, my back was still hurting, still hurting. So. He took me to Bonatti, he was like, hey, look, um, you could go to this guy, he's really good and he'll help your back. So I was like, okay. So I go to Bonatti Institute, I meet Dr. Bonatti and on the spot, right after my MRI, he was able to tell exactly what was wrong with my back. And he explained to me exactly what was wrong with my back with the L3, the L5, being that my disc was bulged and I had a herniated disc and the whole nine. I didn't, I didn't know anything, so I didn't know exactly what he was talking about, and then he just broke it down Barney style for me. So he did the surgery on the left side, and like two, three days later, I was like, hey, I could, I could move, I, I could move now. I went outside, started throwing some kicks outside with my cousin. I was like, you know what, I'm about to go to the school, I'm about to go to the mirrors, and go see what goes on, see if I could, see if I could rumble. And I went, and I stayed up with the class, an hour long, stayed with the class, and now I'm back in the class, six days, and everybody was in awe. Like, didn't you just get out of surgery? I'm like, yeah, I feel great. And they're like, okay, let's see how you do. And I was rolling with everybody, and I'm in the advanced class. So that sounds a lot right there. With the VA, they're always there to help, but at the same time, they're, it's hard for them to get to everybody. It takes a long time. Like for my MRI with the, with, um, the VA, it took them roughly a month to get back to me to let me know what's going on. With Dr. Bernardi, it took a day. 
So with the day, the very next day, I was under the table getting my back fixed. We're not going anywhere because we believe in what we do. There's no other place that will give you those immediate results, first of all. Secondly, you're talking about patients' lives. There's nothing else that may make you feel like you're making a difference. No other place will do it. I didn't believe it myself because, you know, I was going through the whole nine and trying to figure out how I was going to actually come up with the money to pay for my surgery because I really wanted to fight and eventually try to get back into the military. So he basically told me I didn't have to pay for anything, that I was on him because I'm a wounded warrior. So he's looking out for all of us fellow wounded warriors out here. Well, right now I'm actually training for a fight. I have a fight coming up in a couple of weeks and a couple of months ago, I didn't think I'll be fighting ever again. And here it is now, I have a fight coming up in three weeks and I'm ready. I'm more than ready to, to get back in the ring. Cause like I said, I never would have thought that I would be back in the gym fighting in class, anything right now. I would tell Dr. Manati, thank you. Thank you so, so, so much. My, I didn't, I honestly didn't know if I would be able to fight again or run or anything. And now I am, so I, my hat's off to you and I thank you. Definitely go see Dr. Minotti and the Bonatti Institute because they know exactly what they're doing. They're very intelligent. They're very kind, very, very kind. And you know, they, they're here for you. I would tell them to take a bus, a train, a boat, a helicopter and come see Dr. Bonatti. This is a group that uh, uh, has proven themselves. Uh, they're most worthy of uh, extra effort on our part. This is the first time that I am pain free after 18 years. And it's just wonderful. I love it. Phenomenal results. No pain whatsoever. My pain is virtually gone. Nothing short of a miracle. Those surgeries gave me my life back. Already I feel like a new person. I'm going home new. I can chase my grandbaby now. I can garden, I can cook, and uh, I'm really thrilled. The outcome has been remarkable. I feel 100% better. It's like a miracle. It was phenomenal. It literally did change my life. I was in a wheelchair at that time and uh, I left here walking. Every single pain that I had when I came here is gone. I'm ready to go home and feel great. This place is great. Thank you. Everything that they said they would do, they have done, and I'm very, very satisfied and happy with those results. I knew in surgery, in fact, I told the surgeon when he relieved the pain off the nerve. The pain is gone. I'm feeling wonderful. I have no pain. I feel better than I felt in four years from the surgery. It was almost immediate relief. Today I am totally pain free, which is just amazing. It's fantastic. It definitely works. I mean, I really don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> when I first met him, uh, and he reviewed the, uh, you know, the, the MRI and, and was, while reviewing the MRI was saying, you have a problem here that gives you pain. It should have pain here. And it's like, well, exactly. Well, I've had a lot of people ask me uh, about my back. Um, and when I explained to them that I'm virtually pain free, uh, I have recommended since my surgery, three people to Dr. Minotti. And my comment to them was, it worked for me. You need at least a consult. Get an MRI, get a consult, and then you make your decision from there. So anyone that had pain like me, I definitely recommend the Bonatti Spine Institute. Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Bonatti created, perfected, and patented the Bonatti Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Bonatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Bonatti Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Bonatti succeeds where others fail. For our final segment, Dr. Bonatti will continue to serve our veterans by explaining some of the troubles he feels are evident in the government's quick fixes for the VA crisis by introducing a TRICARE system that's doomed to fail. So I'm here with Dr. Bonatti to discuss what's happening right now with the VA in TRICARE. What do you think about this whole 
uh, thing that the government's getting involved, telling the military and that group of people where they can use TRICARE and, and what you think is hidden in this new legislation. One of the things that you need to remember is that the TRICARE is an insurance to allow the veterans to go and look for physicians outside of the system when they need it. But this is a scam because to be able to do that, you need to prove to the Veteran Administration first that you live beyond 40 miles of distance from a veteran facility, from a VA facility. Mm -hmm. At the same time, it's necessary that you submit your request to be seen by a physician mm -hmm. and the VA will give you an appointment and the appointment is something that they consider that appointment acceptable for the VA. So it's not really that they're opening up the system so that the veteran can choose what's good for them and what they're needing for their health care. Not only that, those two, they are stopples that they avoid for the veteran to go and, and look for care. Right. First anything, you, if you look, some of the veterans are waiting in New York uh, for around 600 days. If you ask now for an appointment in, in the Veteran Administration in New York, uh, they will consider that the normal waiting list for the VA in New York is 600 days. Right. If they do that, then, then you will be now selected to apply to request a referral. When you request a referral after that time, it's another list. Mm -hmm. And that, that list is going to put you in a position of waiting uh, months again right. for the referral. And when you call, good luck. You are not yeah. going to receive anybody from the VA answering the phones. And this is all something that's meant to speed up the process with the VA to help them receive the care they need, not delay it, correct? The idea is that, like I said in every program, this is a politician's trick. What they do is they create something that is not going to work. Uh, the Congress went and speed up the, the possibilities to do this type of um, uh, solution. But this solution is being done before they are going in vacation. Right. Now, once this, this thing is signed uh, and they come back, this thing is not going to work. Right. So there's going to be toasted out of the system again and we need to start from zero. So it sounds like a non-solution to me. Not only is it a non-solution, affect not only the vet, but affect also the doctor. If you, if you go outside of the, of the system, uh, not only they try to stop you uh, with all these tricks that I just described, but at the same time they have something even worse. They now accept the, the physicians to see, the private physicians, to see a, a veteran. And once they see the veteran and they submit the bill to the VA, the VA now goes to some type of a system where they question the outside physician of the necessity of these treatments. So the private physicians are going to be very scared to take TRICARE. Right. They are going to say, no, no, we cannot take this one because the government is going to be in our, in our office trying to tell us how we practice now medicine. And already we know that happens in, in Medicare. Right. Already we know that happens in Medicaid. Uh, we know what happens in Obamacare. Right. So all this crap that is, that is created by the government is an other fraud more that is directed to affect the veterans in behalf of the power of the politicians. Well, I know, Dr. Benatti, you're talking pretty bad against the government right now in regards to the VA, but I mean, you see veterans all the time and you have the Help for Wounded Warriors program where you 
have a charitable organization that allows them to be able to have surgeries that they're not receiving anywhere else. So what would you say to other physicians in the nation? This thing of the VA is being now put on the air and they are being exposed, all these disservice and the mistreatments. So we need to react in different way. I think physicians should open the doors to every veteran in the country in a certain way. So what we need to do is we need to go and create programs and we need to donate the time. I mean, I understand physicians are very busy and I understand we also want to be paid for our service. So let's do this. Let's serve two or three veterans in a week or in a month for free. If we have surgeons and we do one or two surgeries, if we have all the physicians and all the surgeons in the country, giving support to a program like that, the VA will die by itself, okay? And then we can restructure the system. The VA is cancer. It's a cancer that is not being taken care of properly and we make the politicians to make decisions. They look very good, they talk very good, but you know, they don't act. And that's why we are today in the problems that we are with Obamacare, and Obamacare is nothing more than the, the, the Veterans Administration service. And it's gonna be worse with time. So we need to defend the doctors that we have today. We need to defend the system that allows the best medicine of the world to survive. The lies that they said that medicine is too expensive, yes, in the hands of the government, but not in the hands of productive, responsible insurance companies. We need to probably uh, work with the insurance companies to a level that they will be a little more responsible. But you know, if you have an irresponsible government, don't ask the insurance company to be responsible. Thank you for watching American Medicine Today. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to contact us at the number below. Or you can tweet at Dr. Benatti or hashtag American Medicine Today. We respect your views and opinions and would like to hear from you. Thank you for watching American Medicine Today, presented by the Benatti Spine Institute. Please look in your local listings for our next regularly scheduled program. To hear more from Dr. Alfred Benatti and American Medicine Today, Tune into News Radio 970 WFLA. Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Benatti created, perfected, and patented the Benatti Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Benatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Benatti Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Benatti succeeds where others fail is a paid presentation for American Medicine Today and the Bonatti Spine Institute. The information and opinions expressed are solely those of American Medicine Today and are not the opinions of the station, its affiliates, management, or employees.